GF pushed for an open relationship. But when I slept with my friend while she was out, she got mad and now wants to close it off. Hi Reddit. So, my girlfriend, 24 female and I, 23 male have been going through a very rough time lately. And it all boiled over in the past few days. We've been together for three years, and things were going well for the most part. We got along and would rarely fight. Even when we did, we would both cool down and talk it out not long after. However, about two weeks ago, my girlfriend approached me and asked if I wanted to open our relationship. I was immediately shocked and almost thought she was joking at first. She said that she really loves me and wants to be with me. But before we get more serious, she wants to get more experience. I was her first everything, and she has been with two other guys. I shot down the idea and told her I wasn't comfortable with it. She kept badgering me about it but eventually relented when she realized I wasn't budging. That seemed like the end of it. However, a few days later, she came to me again and asked more aggressively about it insinuating that we might have to take a break if we couldn't try opening our relationship for a few months. Considering it was basically, we take a break or I give her this, I relented and said we could open up the relationship. Two days later, last Friday, I got home from work and saw that she was dressed up. I asked what for. She said that she was going out to the bar with her friends and wouldn't be back until tomorrow. I immediately recognized what this meant and asked if she'd rather spend the night in with me. But she said she really wanted to do this. Eventually, she left, and I was left sitting alone, watching TV and getting drunk. I got sad, so I called one of my close friends, 23 female, and told her about the situation. After we talked for a while, I asked her if she wanted to come over and drink because I was feeling like crap being alone. After she got there and we hung out for a bit, Drinking and discussing the open relationship and how upset I was, my friend suggested that if my girlfriend was essentially cheating on me, I might as well enjoy the perks of an open relationship too. I'm sure you can see what happened there, and I won't get into details, but it made me feel a lot better. Flash forward to the next morning, I wake up to my girlfriend freaking out, asking me what the hell my friend and I were doing in our bed. I told her what happened, and she got mad. She said she didn't even do anything last night and ended up crashing at her friend's house. Now, she wants to close our relationship back off and make me prove my loyalty for cheating on her. We never discussed any rules or anything like that, so I really don't see how I did anything wrong. So, am I the idiot for participating in the open relationship that my girlfriend suggested? Some relevant comments. Not the idiot. She pressured you into agreeing to something you didn't want, didn't set any rules, and showed a complete disregard for your feelings. You did nothing wrong. You were open, and you had no rules about telling each other anything, because you had no rules at all. In the future, though, don't agree to something you don't want. Breaking up when she wouldn't stop pressuring you was the right move and would have saved you some of the coming mess. She planned for the relationship to be open on her end, so she could sleep with other guys while he sat at home alone. That's why she considers what he did cheating, but doesn't consider what she wanted to do cheating. Not the idiot, and he needs to get rid of her as a P that is one selfish, toxic person. This relationship isn't equal. Just break it off. She had big expectations of her ability to pull men and wanted to get it out of her system you didn't have to even try. So she's angry. Not the idiot but don't pretend this is salvageable. I don't have an issue with open relationships, but this isn't how they form and work. Yeah I'm accepting the fact that there's no coming back from this. She wanted an open relationship so she could go out clubbing shopping for an upgrade but keep you around as a backup plan. She expected you to stay home alone depressed while she hooked up with other guys and you shattered her expectations of how this whole thing was going to play out by just calling up a friend and getting a hookup right out of the gate. Foolishness on her part. Girls have it much easier but it's not that hard for a guy to get laid. Of course the second you use the opportunity provided by the open relationship, she shut it down instantly. This was not part of her plan. I don't think you really did anything wrong since an open relationship should be both ways. The only thing I'd criticize you on is sleeping with your friend at your place. Her place or a hotel would have been better. This relationship is toast but you will make her think twice about asking for an open relationship in any of her future relationships. Whether or not that's bad for her future partners is a question. Will she just resort to cheating in secret or break up next time she wants a change in her relationship? Story 2 So, my girlfriend, 20 female and I, 22 male have been together for a little over 10 months now. 
We haven't had any heated arguments or fights, except for the fact that she keeps tickling me randomly despite the fact that I've repeatedly told her to never do it again because I can act strangely to it. Something from my childhood which I won't delve into. Now to get to the current situation. This week I've had my car returned from a paint job and some major look changes and I was really satisfied with the results. So I took a day off from work and took my girlfriend on a short trip outside the city. We drove to a lake, ate some food and relaxed for a couple of hours until it got pretty dark and we decided to head back home to get some sleep as I had to go to work the next day and she had an exam. On the way home, I started talking about how happy I felt with how the paint job turned out and out of nowhere, she starts tickling me. I pushed her hand away and told her to stop. Then she reached for my ribs with both hands and got me swerving off the road. Thankfully, nobody was hurt, although my car got some deep scratches but that doesn't even matter anymore, as I already slowed down after her first attempt to tickle me. I'll admit that I told her what the F is wrong with you as soon as we stepped out of the car and she started crying, but I couldn't care less as I felt as if my veins were about to pop. When we got home, I told her to pack her things and go to her best friend, but she threw a tantrum and begged me to forgive her for a little mistake. I didn't say a word, I simply stared in disgust and pointed to her luggage. After her friend picked her up, I tried to go to sleep but my mind was racing, so I barely got any rest. This happened on Tuesday, and she's been blowing up my phone ever since, but I haven't answered any calls or texts, and just blocked her. This led to her friend coming to my house and telling me to at least hear my girlfriend out, but I've told her to F off and leave me alone, which made her tell me that I'm more in love with a car than with my girlfriend. So, am I the idiot in this situation? Should I talk to my girlfriend? I already feel like I can't trust her after what happened and that our relationship can't be fixed. Some comments. I am a 42-year-old female married. My kids are 11 and 9. I have taught them they can not argue and shout in the car to not distract the driver as all of our lives could be put at risk. The kicker for me was she did it a second time after you told her to stop. OP you may have many girlfriends over the years, but you will only have one life. Not the idiot my dude. Kick her sass to the curb. Not the idiot, she's an effing idiot. It wasn't just a little mistake, you don't mess with someone while they're driving. Period. You've also told her time and time again not to tickle you and she refuses to respect that boundary. To the point of putting you and everyone on the road around you in danger. She can F right off in my opinion. Not the idiot. What your ex GF did could have ended in manslaughter. And even before that. Her tickling you when you told her repeatedly that it disturbs you was abusive and disrespectful. But tickling you while you were driving was insanely cruel and dangerous. I'm sorry, but there is nothing to talk about here. She has shown you what she is. Believe her and don't let her near you. Even without the childhood trauma tickling someone driving a hurtling missile going down the road is so incredibly stupid and dangerous that it shows the absolute immaturity of this girl. She needs to grow up before dating anyone else. It has nothing to do with valuing your car more than your girl. It's valuing your life more than your girl's petty feelings. Update. So the past couple of hours have been insane, honestly. Before the actual update, I just wanted to sort some things out. I've seen people talking about this post being rage bait or fake. Honestly, I wish it was, but I actually needed to hear some opinions on what happened. Some people talked about me having anger issues. This is not true at all. I never snapped at her like this for tickling me, let alone hitting her or anything like this. But in the rage of the moment, I couldn't keep my mouth shut. I might consider myself to be a calm person, but that doesn't mean I will laugh and giggle through stupid stuff. The actual crash happened at a speed that could have slaughtered us if I swerved in the wrong direction. I was driving on a country road and could have frontally hit a car coming from the other direction, as the speed at which the crash happened was around 40 miles per hour. The tickling part and childhood trauma, I've mentioned that to my, now ex-girlfriend around three months into our relationship, but as many pointed the obvious, I wasn't dating the sharpest tool in the shed and it took me a while to realize it, so I guess I might be a bit dumb as well lol. I think I might have misused the term ghosting. In my head, telling her to get out of my house was already a clear sign of our relationship status. Now, to the actual update. After reading nearly all the comments, I took the decision to send my ex a message where I told her we should meet face to face. Some people suggested that I should file for a lawsuit, but my ex is still in uni and her parents can barely afford helping her. She obviously has done an insanely dumb stunt but I don't want to punish her parents for it. The car is in the process of getting fixed and I can afford it without major financial issues. Still, I took screenshots of her messages in order for me to have some proof in case the situation escalates. So, we met earlier at a coffee shop. She looked as if she's been crying for a long time, but it didn't change my mind at all. 
What shocked me was the fact that she leaned in for a kiss when she saw me as if nothing happened. I stopped her and told her that we need to have a serious conversation. I explained that what happened wasn't because of the car itself, but because of her disrespecting my boundaries and not thinking for a second about what might happen if she did that thing. Besides that, I also felt disrespected by the fact that her best friend came knocking at my door to demand things, despite not having any rights to do so, which led me to ask my ex if she told her best friend the truth or if she lied about the situation. She said that she only told her friend that we had a small car crash and I'm pissed at her, hearing that made me feel disappointed as hell, but I did my best to remain calm. I told her to tell the real story to her friends and family, and she raised her voice and told me that I'm accusing her of being a liar, something that led to a 15 minutes discussion about how the crash was solely her fault, and how she put our lives at risk. I asked her if everything's clear to her about our situation and her response was yep, 100%, can we go home now? That honestly shocked me. I told her that there's no way we can be back together and I suggested she should be more careful, and consider it with her future partner. Her reaction was all tears, shaking, begging me to reconsider my decision, but I just can't look at her the same. I explained again that for me it wasn't a small mistake she made, it was a full-on stupid decision that shouldn't be done by an adult, as it could have resulted in something deadly. She just thinks I'm exaggerating and this back and forth argument led to her asking if there's someone else in my life and I'm just using the accident as an excuse. I denied and told her that she's too selfish to even realize that she broke my trust and disrespects me by saying this crap. I left the coffee shop feeling like I've been talking to a wall, but at least I can't say that I didn't try to have a conversation. An hour ago her mom texted me asking what happened and I told her everything. I said that I don't want any money from them, but the only thing I'm asking is for my ex to keep her distance from me. She apologized for what her daughter did and wished me all the best. As for her friend, from my understanding she just came to my house without talking with my ex on whether she should do it or not, so I guess she just tried to be the main character in this whole story. Right now I'm preparing for work, but my chest isn't heavy anymore. In case anything will happen in the future, I'll keep everyone updated, but I hope it won't be the case lol. Thank you for helping me navigate this weird situation and thanks for all the kind messages. Hope everyone stays safe. Edit. Sorry if this wasn't the drama-filled update some people might have expected, but I came here with the desire to get some perspective on my situation and be as transparent as possible. I never intended to post this story for votes or anything like that. Story 3. I have 3 kids, 8 male, 5 male and 1 female. My younger son is friends with a classmate I'll call Mikey. His brother James is in the same class as my older son, but they're not friends. Back in March, the boy's mother informed the class mom group chat that James had the flu, and his birthday party would have to be cancelled. My older son had not been invited to that party. My wife and I didn't even know about it until she saw the text. But since my son wasn't friends with James, we didn't mind it. My younger son just got his invitation to Mikey's birthday party, which will take place in the first week of June. On it, there is a reminder to bring an additional gift for James. Both me and my wife were confused. When we asked their parents about it, they said that since James didn't get to have his friends over for his own birthday, they wanted his friends to have the opportunity to give him gifts during Mikey's party. Again, my older son is not friends with James and had not been invited to his cancelled party, so we were never planning on giving him a gift in the first place. We didn't even know it was his birthday. Even if we were buying him a gift, we'd give it to him on some other occasion, not during his younger brother's party. It doesn't feel fair to Mikey. Once my wife and I had agreed on that, we informed the boy's parents we wouldn't get a gift for James. We told them all our reasons, but they argued that we were being petty and vindictive, and that it was unfair to deprive James of a birthday gift just because our son doesn't like him, from what I gather. That's not the case. Their mother is threatening to uninvite my younger son from Mikey's party over this. Their father is less harsh, but still thinks we should reconsider our decision. Would I be the idiot? Relevant comments. So for starters, you are most definitely not the idiot here and the parents are incredibly strange and entitled for this. However, it makes me feel badly for both of their children. It is not you and your wife's job to provide gifts for the older child but I would look at it like this. How important is Mikey to your child? Could you spare even a small gift for the older child? Even if it is from the dollar store so your son could spend time with a friend who is important to him. It makes me feel like the children are not treated right by their parents and it makes me feel sad to see this kind of behavior from them. But no, you are not wrong. 
While I wouldn't say money is a problem here, we're not made of it. My daughter turned one weeks ago and we'll have family coming over from our home country in July, so we're trying not to spend too much. Even if I looked for an inexpensive birthday gift, I have no idea what James likes, and neither does my son. I also would not give it to him during Mikey's birthday party. I know it was their parents' decision, but if I wouldn't do it to my own kids, I won't do it to theirs. Not the idiot. Are they planning on shaking down Mikey's guests at the door to make sure they're carrying two gifts? And not let them in if not? Because I would just send your younger son with Mikey's gift. I don't understand this, these are Mikey's friends, right? You happen to have an older son the appropriate age, but most families won't. So they're forcing two presents out of kids who may not even know the older one. Damn, here's an idea, why don't they just reschedule the kid's cancelled birthday? If they can't afford a fancy one, then let it be old school cake at the house. These days most older boys would be happy hanging put and playing video games anyway. Or if it's warm, buy a bunch of cheap water guns and put them outside with a stack of towels. I did thus during lockdown, best party ever, even if my yard suffered a bit. Update, the main piece of advice I got when I first posted here, or at least the one that stuck with me the most was to buy a smaller, inexpensive gift for James. I was more than fine with doing that, but I had no idea what he liked. I also didn't want to give him that gift during his brother's birthday party, as that didn't feel fair to Mikey. My wife and I talked, and we settled on getting James a gift card to a bookstore. We also had our older son give it to him at school, days before the party. He said James was grateful. Later that day, the boy's mom texted the mom group chat saying she didn't want people cheaping out on James just because it wasn't his birthday. My wife agrees that it felt targeted, but we can't prove anything. Either way, we've given him a gift. We don't need to indulge in this any more than we already have. We'll just complain to each other. Our younger son wasn't uninvited from the birthday party. I was working, so my wife took him. According to her, the party was clearly Mikey's. The only thing indicating otherwise was the fact that James opened his gifts during it. My wife said she avoided their parents, but did get a few dirty looks from them, especially when Mikey opened the gift my son had picked out. It was a Spider-Man toy car that he thought Mikey would like. We'd bought it before this whole fiasco. Since we actually know Mikey, it was more personal than the gift card. I still don't understand a single decision the boy's parents made, but I'm glad my son's friendship is intact. I just hope my wife and I don't need to interact with that family too much in the future. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching until the end. If you really like our videos, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Have a great day.